everybody. Up to this point, we have defined a lot of terms. We have made our job descriptions. So we've discussed theory and my approach to parenting children. And you might be saying, I get that I have to train my child. I know that. Let's get to the how. Get to the how, woman. And so today, we're going to talk about practical application through the use of focus activities, which I'm really excited about. Focus activities help you communicate in healthy ways, teach and take responsibility, simplify your lives, and promotes healthy relationships between you and your children. Providing consistent expectations followed by consistent results. It's very clear when you need your child to do something that they need to do it, and, and there's always a result. And so I am taking responsibility for my child when they're young, and I'm teaching them how to take responsibility for themselves. And I relinquish my control as they show me they can handle it. Bottom line is children are not born knowing how to regulate themselves. And I want to provide them with all of these enriching benefits, but not at the expense of their character. And so that's why as a parent, I want to make sure that they're developing their character first so that they can regulate themselves enough to enjoy all the benefits of living in our world today without it becoming a distraction to, to who and what they are. You have the composure and the calm demeanor of knowing what you're doing and the child can relax into that authority. There may be a rough transition at, as you begin this process because it's not something they're used to, but once it's become a habit, it'll be their second nature and they won't even question it anymore. In short, a focus activity is a transitional tool to help children learn how to focus. I remember when I started this process, my oldest was already seven and she had grown some seedy behavior that I did not like. I developed these unfavorable traits mainly because I was too nice. I did not give them boundaries to show them how to treat me. And it was very difficult because I thought they would just know. I thought you were supposed to know how to treat me. <laughs> and I didn't know that I was supposed to be the one to teach them how to do that. After three years of increasingly difficult behavior, I just, I realized I had to take out the prun pruning shears and start cutting out all of these bad habits that had grown wild in the garden of our lives so that we could have room for the good habits to grow and the ones that we did want and the ones that we wanted to keep. Remember that if three jobs is too much, we have to scale back and start with just one. Obedience is your only job at first, and then we'll build on as, as they develop their, their capabilities. We can add more on after. Reinforce that first key to heaven until it becomes their second nature. And we do this by introducing to them the, the concept of a focus activity. And so I, this, this is what I said to my seven-year-old, and I'll record this. You will be required to be obedient from this day forward for the rest of your life. This isn't a temporary thing. I will give you help by providing you with focus activities every time you disobey. Or in other words, you could say, if you are found to be disobedient, a focus activity is a simple task that allows you to practice the art of focusing on one thing. My perspective is it's not the child's fault. I am the adult. I provided more than they could handle. Their poor behavior showed me that. I will simplify their lives and add enrichments only as their behavior shows me they can handle it. I will hold their hand through this process. It's on my time. I will take time out of my day to help them learn this. And that's what it means to be a parent, that I will stop what I am doing to give you the focus activity to help you learn how to obey in the future. And that is the key to a, to a good life with children, that you've trained them to do this. And if you start when they're young, it's very simple. Um, I have three children now, and my youngest has been a joy. He's been so fun, and he's been my, the child I've had the least stress about because I've because I now I know what to do when I come to these situations. With my first child, I didn't. I was I was a bit clueless. I was like, oh. Are you supposed to ignore me when I ask to do that? Are you sure that that's what you want to do? Because that looks kind of dangerous to me. And so there was a lot of things I was unsure about as a first-time mom that now with my third child, I don't have that anxiety or that, uh, that stress about um, 
my, I guess my confidence as a parent. And I, a lot, I attribute a lot of that to this process. I want to share it because it helped me. And I'm hoping that it can help others. So I will stop my day to help them with a focus activity. And I'll do it like this. You have failed to put that toy in that basket like I asked. Therefore, we will practice obeying with a simpler menial task. First, pick up the toy and put it in the basket. They still have to do that. They still have to put this. So they're not getting out of work be just because they got a focus activity. They have to do what I asked them before and now they've got extra and I am stopping my schedule and my day to give them a second task. It's that important to me. And when they learn that, you will stop your day and your schedule in order to give them more to do. It becomes important to them to do that simple thing. That, I mean, it was just putting the toy in a basket. And that's, that's, that's just one example that I pulled out of a hat. Focus activities are small, bite-sized little jobs that are beneficial to the home. And they are something that the child is not normally required to do. It's not their chores. I separate them out from chores. Chores are expected from each person who lives in the home. And they help run and the function of the home. Chores are doing the dishes, wash your laundry, clean your room, wash the bathrooms. Those, those are chores. Everyone must do this. Focus activities simply you could consider them my jobs they're little things on my list that are so far down on my list that i'll never get a chance to do them because of everything else that takes priority so the children are assisting me in knocking out that to-do list and they're little things that are they are capable of doing and i'll give you some examples i keep a stack of pots near my house in the backyard for planting and they had previously taken them and scattered them to the four corners of the yard. And they had been rolling around back there for I don't know how long. Because it was not on my to-do list to go out there and pick them all up. And it wasn't going to take priority over making dinner or taking care of all the other things going on. So they were getting blown around by the wind and getting stepped on and broken and just treated like garbage. And these are my pots. And so one of the first things I had them do was gather the pots gather the pots, gather the pots. And that becomes their mantra while they're doing this. And if you do this with a young child, it's almost like a, like a game. And if it's a very, very young child, like 12 months, like, and you can, you can play games like this with a 12 month old and they'll love it, but you would do it with the 12 month old, gather the pots. And you're, you're showing the example of gathering the pots while you say it, gather the pots, gather the pots, gather the pots. Since mine were older, I was writing a grocery list um, and while they were gathering the pots. And as they slowed down, I would point to the ones that I still saw, but I remained seated. Um, it was important to me that this was their focus activity. They earned for not fulfilling their task on in their, in, within my timeline. <laughs> Did you check the water barrel? Did you look behind the shed? Did you find the one in the tree? And so I'm asking them questions from my memory of where I remembered seeing them hiding, almost like an Easter egg hunt. See, it's like an Easter egg hunt. It's super fun. When they had finished gathering every last one, I made sure to praise them. Thank you for putting my pots in that stack. I prefer them. I much prefer them right there. Thank you. Troubleshooting. If the child resists the focus activity, it's actually a very simple matter. So, for example, you give your instructions and you say, gather the pots. And they go, whiny, whiny, boo, boo. You can say, I can make that two focus activities. I, in fact, I have a whole list of things that I could use your help with that I am willing to stop my day and do them with you if you continue to act this way. And that should, at that point, if they haven't already, entice them to, to, to be motivated to gather the pots. This is what children these days are missing. They're missing the, this structure and this expectation of self-discipline where, yes, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do. People seem to be too busy, distracted, and depressed to bother with it. And I know that as a new mom, I had no clue. I was clueless. I didn't know how to do this with my first child, which is why I'm sharing this publicly to help others because it's, it's improved the atmosphere of my home journey tremendously and my own like I said it just it helped me conquer my anxiety I don't have that 
self-doubt anymore. For my second focus activity, I had them gather the rocks, gather the rocks, gather the rocks. Because I had a, a rock project I was working on in my backyard and they had scattered them about and the wind couldn't blow them to the four corners of the yard, but it, at least it was reserved, like the rock mess was scattered around the patio, which was, it was a disaster. My backyard was a disaster area and I was bothering me. It was in the back of my head of something that, oh, I need to clean that, I need to clean that, I need to clean that little naggy thing. And um, so having the children go out and clean up their own mess helped a lot. Therefore, the next time they were found disobeying, I asked them to help me by putting all the rocks away behind the shed. In the rock pile, where they go? Gather the rocks, gather the rocks. And that's the mantra. It became their mantra as they practiced focusing on that one task. You will gather the rocks, gather the rocks until it is done, until it is done. Gather the rocks. And if they're like, oh, no, no, like if they start doing other things, gather the rocks, gather the rocks. Hey, hey, hey. Gather the rocks. We're doing this first before we do anything else. No screens, television, movie, video games, internet, no toys, games, no distractions of any kind until it is finished. Including mine. I am fully focused on them while they're learning a new skill and they are focused on getting it done so we can get back to our regularly scheduled fun. I am not doing it for them. I'm not doing it with them because I tried that with teaching my oldest how to clean her room. I tried, well, if I clean your room with you and it always ends up with her sitting watching me clean her room and that I so I've kind of learned my lesson there that they have to do it themselves you can't do it for them gathering the rocks added considerably to the livable condition of the backyard so I was again able to thank them for being such great helpers and for for doing that and it was that again that little naggy piece off of my to-do list that is now finished and it, it's just this wonderful thing that I've discovered that I want everyone to know about. It can also be done by super young children. If they're old enough to walk, they're old enough to pick up the rocks, you know? Especially since they were they were only this big. They weren't super huge rocks. They were, they were everywhere, little ankle hazards. Um, but I would again recommend participating with a child that's younger than two. They are helping you and they will love it like it's a game. It doesn't, if you wait until they're 10, they might just pick up that rock and throw it at your face. Or through a window. I mean, you've waited a long time to initiate a reboot of their behaviors, and it's might you might need some professional help at that point, um, especially if things are getting heated. Which is why my goal is not to raise my blood pressure throughout the day. My blood pressure. That if they fail, they earned it, and I don't have to get up. I don't have to get ugly about it. Um, wh whiny whiny poo poo. I asked nicely, I reminded you, and I warned you with my warning voice. Uh, you walked yourself into this situation and you are gonna have to pick up these rocks to get yourself out of it. It's a very matter of fact, this is how we run things now. Now this is the new normal for us and you, until you learn how to use this system. Other ideas of focus activities include washing windows, wiping floorboards, dusting, sweeping the stairs, vacuuming, Spot cleaning the kitchen floor. You know how like you always get those little spots? And I would say to them, find five spots, depending on how old they are. Find seven spots or seven squares. Pick seven squares of the tiles of the kitchen floor and scrub these seven squares so that they would get that strip right underneath the, the counter where things tend to, to fall and make a mess. Sweep the leaves out of the doorway so, so that we stop kicking them into the house as we come in every time. So basically anything you notice around the house that needs a little tender loving care. Dust, crumbs, webs, straightening shoes in the entryway, hanging coats, any, anything, any little thing that will help you. Never leave a small child alone with a toilet brush. Mm -hmm. That small child will be all magic wand, that smell into all the corners that you will never find. Each task, when done well, should be praised and appreciated. Always thank your child for doing what you ask. After just a few days of earning extra activities for disobedience, your child will be motivated to follow your instructions the first time. When you notice they haven't earned a focus activity in a while, congratulate them and move on to the next job. Respect. It only takes a few days of intense focus effort in order to start seeing results. Those first few days you are focused and you are getting it done and you will use this process less and less as time goes on and after about four to six weeks it's done, it's over and your child is a trained human being. I'm willing to exchange a few days of my life for the peace and serenity that it brings into my home.